Hello there. Nice to see you all. Okay, so we have this problem. So say we have a very large data set of images. So it could be your paintings, which is 200,000 oil paintings, or it could be the British Library 1 million images, coincidentally. And we want to find something in it. So um, we want to look for, say, a horse, a dog, a flower. It could be anything. It could be fire, nighttime, moon. So we're using object to represent all these, but, you know, a theme of some variety. And we want to find all of these, but our database isn't annotated with those objects. Oh, so that's not great, is it? So we could get a human, they're good, to go through all the artwork and annotate what's there. But this would take a very long time, and they'd get really bored, and then they'd stop, and you had to find someone new, and it would be incredibly tedious. So instead, we could use computer vision and machine learning to do it automatically. Ooh, indeed. <laughs> so, how is this achieved? Well, it turns out, if you want to learn what an object looks like, there's already lots of information available on the internet to learn from. So Google image search is a very good thing to use. So say you want to know what a dog looks like, we type in dog, and oh look, here's lots of pictures of dogs. So that's good. So we take these images of dogs, and we take some images that don't contain dogs, and we learn what's in common between these images. So hmm, computers looks at these, says, oh, what's in common? And what separates them from these? So this is all done automatically. This is some machine learning, and it'll learn what a dog looks like. So this information can then be applied to all the art or images you want automatically in a matter of seconds to find instances of this happens to be in your paintings, instances of dogs. So I thought I'd show us something better than a live demo. I think I'll show you a video of a demo I did so nothing goes wrong. <laughs> okay, so this is to demonstrate our system and I'll talk you through it if I can. The mouse has disappeared. Just click. Oh, so fantastic. This is our system. I want to find horses in this 200,000 oil paintings. So I type in horse. It's a good start. And we download images. This is all automatic. Downloading images from Google Images. Learning what a horse looks like, what separates it from non-horses. <coughs> processing this information. So this is the time-consuming part. And then in less than a second, we apply it to all the paintings. And you can see here, we have lots and lots of horses. So it works well. And let's look at another page, just so this isn't a fluke. I know, there's more horses. <laughs> so we can definitely find horses. OK, so what is an application of this, apart from just looking at things you like? Well, um, your paintings, as I mentioned, is 200,000 paintings taken from UK galleries. And what's in these paintings? Well, a fraction of them are annotated, so we can see what was in those but most of them aren't. So our system is able to generate tags. So we learn what objects look like on the fly, we apply them to these paintings, and we look at the results. And oh, look, there's loads of horses, loads of dogs, etc. So I can show you some cool examples now. This is something I'm lacking, a beard. And you can see we've got these Google images, automatically learn what a beard is, and then apply it to the paintings. And look, we have lots of bearded men. <laughs> Very observant. I bet none of you spotted the cow in the horse example, did you? Okay. So here, bridges. So this is what we're learning from and retrieving bridges. You can see it's, li it's largely perfect. You can notice there's an aeroplane there. You can see how that happened. So in practice, what we did was just got one person to quickly look over the top rank results. Most of them were right, and they just clicked on the few wrong ones which is nowhere near as tedious as going through lots of random images and saying whether there's an aeroplane or not. We have some carriages here. So you can see that it's found things with and without horses. It's really learned what a carriage is all about. And let's go on to something prettier, some flowers. Nice, isn't it? This works perfectly. <coughs> and some houses. You can see it's found lots of different houses. There's manor houses, beach houses, shops, but you'd all agree they were all houses. Hmm, I'm going through this far too quickly. Okay, so we did this on these paintings and we thought, oh, this is about the British million images. So we downloaded all of them. We computed for the features for them, which took a few hours. 
and we can store it away so we can access them instantly. And we thought we'd find objects in that data set because it was relevant to what we're doing today. So I'm going to show you some more video <laughs> demos, but instead of looking through your paintings, we're going to look through the British Library images. So, I want to find coats of arms. So we're getting images from Google of what coats of arms look like. We're computing the features, we're comparing those features to non-coat of arms, and then applying a classifier we learned through that to all a million images, and that takes about a second. So it says, it model trained, it took, yeah, ranked in less than a second to apply this classifier to all million images. <coughs> and we can pick out coats of arms. And I'd also thought we'd show another example. In this one, I look for houses. So it only needs to learn from about 100 images off Google to find out what a house looks like. And then even though these are photos, it's able to find them in these scriptures. So it can find it in different forms of art. It doesn't have to be photo to photo. It can be photo to painting, photo to sketches. And you can see lots of houses there. Now, I don't know how to get on the internet here, but if I can, I was going to maybe show a few more examples at the audience behest. I'm going to regret saying that. But <laughs> might be, you might do. Oops. So, um, Just, uh, yeah. Second. Sure. Question. Uh, yes? What's the most abstract, or perhaps I should say the least concrete term that you'd use? Because, um, for example, beard. I mean, would it pick up Mary Beard? What was the second one? Mary Beard. Yeah. Oh, poly polysemy. Well, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, sometimes, so that's, yeah, that's to do with the training data. Could you show so, wireless on? Wireless is by there. So okay. bow, bow is particularly bad because bow, bow, bow of a ship. So yeah, that's really to do with the training data. But um, you can get some really abstract things. Like I, I tried finding really confusing stuff like chaos and sadness and ghosts in paintings. Right. And the results actually look like they contain things. So ghosts has typically got really like blue hues and everyone looking quite sad. And chaos is messy battlefields, hopefully. Uh, not Chrome. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I don't like. I don't like Chrome. But I need to go on the VPN to Oxford if it lets me. Uh, say it automatically tags back. Say it again, sorry. Did you say you could automatically tag back? What do you mean, tag back? Sorry. I, I sorry, I don't understand the question. If you describe it's got a horse in it and they've not got any tags or. Can you send the horse back to the original so that in the future? Yes, that's actually what we've done with the um, with um, the people who run your paintings. We've sent them loads of these tags that they can add to their things. So, okay, let's look through paintings because paintings are pretty. Um, does anyone like to make a request? Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> I have no idea if this will work, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see what happens. And really, that's what it's about. <laughs> okay. no, so this is this is this is just what Google Images for training data. That's not my doing, but I'm curious as to what it finds. Let's go with something more concrete. Ships. <laughs> Ships. So it's quite cool. So these paintings are, you know, hundreds, some of them are hundreds of years old, and it's learning from what a new ship looks like, and it'll still be able to find what old ships are based on the, the learning process. And we'll now see some ships. So the only, the time-consuming part is downloading the images and learning. Applying what you've learned to a million images takes a fraction of a second, which is really nice. There we go. <laughs> Let's go with one more more concrete example so we can leave on a high. Book. I 
Attempted by monkey. <laughs> no, I haven't, actually. Actually, I want to go with one of my personal... F I'm going to ignore you all and go with one of my personal favourites, which is Tiger. So there, there aren't actually many... In these 200,000 paintings from British galleries, there aren't many tigers at all. So we expect to see some on the first page, maybe, and that'll be about it. This demo, by the way, is going to be, in the new year, going to be publicly available so you can all play with it. Yep. Tigers. And I just, want, I just want to try one last thing, if that's okay. Because of uh, Mario's talk, I want to look for maps in the British Library. I thought that would be quite cool. <laughs> Oh, me. I just decided it'll be download 100 images. So you can say 200, it'll be better, but it'll take longer. Um, uh, the output of... Aha! The output of a convolution on your network. Learnt on um, ImageNet. Okay, I probably have to wrap it up now, don't I? But, uh, One more question? Yes. You said you've given the tags to um, your paintings, which is great because it's actually practical and just brilliant. How did you how did you do that? Was that an easy process, one that you would probably be able to do fairly easy with, like the British Library, or was oh, that um... incredi incredibly easily? All I do is give a a little SQL file that just contains um, a tag ID and the paintings that have it. It's really straightforward. So if anyone wants annotation for their data sets, then do give me an email which would be my cue to go back to the presentation and say, please email me if you have any questions after this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.